Hello, bonjour, welcome back to VR Essentials. My name is Lazius K, and we talk about the practical uses of VR. Woo! That's right. Right, moving right into it. Remember, link in the description below for part one of the top 10 key highlights under five minutes. I think you'll enjoy that video, so do catch it. But the event for day two, part two, opened up with the CTO John Carmack of Oculus. Uh, who talked about and dived into a little bit about the future of VR. So without further ado, let's go into it. One of the things that was interesting that he said was that he confirmed that the Oculus Go actually did as well as the Oculus Rift S and Oculus Rift in terms of sales and also in terms of content immersion experience. I mean, the Rift and Rift S offer six degrees of freedom, so you can bend in VR, you can walk around your space and everything is absolutely amazing. Oculus Go is more of a media device that you put on and of course you watch your media like for example in the taxi or the plane or the subway or wherever you want. Uh, without having any camera tracking or any setups to do. So it's really plug and play, really easy to get things going. And they did not mention, even though they said that they will do the emulation for the Go on the Oculus Quest, because now the Oculus Quest offers, it's the wireless VR headset, offers also three degrees of freedom as well as six degrees of freedom, because there is a choice, but it's still not the go-to headset to go. So even though there is going to be the emulation of about 50 titles to start with, from the Oculus Go into the Oculus Quest, there's no mention of the Oculus Go actually disappearing or going anywhere for the moment. So very much you can still buy it, still the headset to go for media consumption. So yeah, I was really happy about that. And who knows, maybe, maybe, maybe one day we'll have the Oculus Go number two, although there was no reference of that. And I certainly cannot say that that will definitely happen at all. One of the things he spoke about was getting more people into VR, alluding to potential future technologies. And he mentioned that what would be really great is if we have a VR headset device that actually doubles into a phone. So can you imagine if my phone was also could somehow work and I could put it on and it would be a VR device? That's probably not going to happen. However, well, not in maybe the next 10 years, who knows, but never say never. But what could happen though is the integration of, for example, software like Skype or other software or even your own, uh, you know, an app that, that, that can hook up to any form of telecom or telco for that, for that matter. So when you do receive a call, it'll be patched through directly into a VR headset and then you could actually uh, meet or talk to that person in a VR room or you could just like Skype, for example, the calls just patched to your, to your headset. No need, you could still continue doing the things that you're doing whilst being able to speak to that person or just having a very simple live feed of the camera. So just like what, how we see each other right now, how you see me, it will just be in the corner of your VR headset. So I think that's pretty interesting. I'm pretty sure that telcos are gonna get into VR pretty soon. One of the other takeaways of things that he was talking about was two things. First is casting. Quest casting to a TV wirelessly is still not there. Uh, you can use, of course, the Google Cast. The Google Cast has some issues. It doesn't really work all the time. It stops. Um, it's not like, you know, Apple TV. Apple TV, fantastic. You just click a button, boom, it's there. But unfortunately, the Oculus is Android savvy, not really Apple savvy. So tethered, uh, you know, the Rift S would probably much do, would do much better there uh, in terms of casting your content onto a giant screen of any kind, um, but they are working on that. The other thing that he mentioned was the batteries inside your Oculus Touch. There is a bug, it seems, for a lot of us, where even when we turn off our headsets, especially for the Oculus Quest, I can't talk about the Oculus Rift, um, the battery seems to keep draining even though the headset is switched off and the controller is only supposed to pair or work when your Oculus Quest is switched on. So we don't really know what's happening there, um, but he does advise to just remove the batteries when you power off your headset. Social behavior in VR, how is this supposed to be controlled? How do you go about it? And Kate Kelly, the marketing person for Altspace, Altspace, one of the best, I would say, and trustworthy communities for social media and online meetings. Uh, we're saying how they're adding their own tools with people, you know, uh, VR admins who can boot people out or you can tell people not to do something properly, otherwise some repercussions will happen. But of course, they're also comparing the real world where you can't just take a chair and throw it to someone because the police will go, will come and take you away or 
you know, some some lawful repercussions will happen to you. So how do you put that in VR was quite interesting. Link in the description below to that action. Recording content in mixed reality so that you can blend VR and the person who's actually giving demos live. Uh, that would That is really amazing because now it can be done wirelessly. There's another company that came out with it first called Live and they do it with their tethered headsets but they are working on technology to do it wireless. However, Oculus have beaten them to the punch uh, in providing some technology where you can record yourself on the green screen using software and then hardware and all types of different things and you can really make it look seamless. So they talked about how the rendering was possible, the latency, all these kind of different things and also of course they show you how they actually do it. So link in the description below if you want to know more about how to record mixed reality content because whew, it's really awesome. And click on the subscribe and notification bell because I'll be setting all this up. In fact, I've already started to set all this up. It'll be finished within the first week of October as I'm waiting for some hardware to be delivered to my home mixed reality studio. So, right, let's move forward. Other cool topics is all about how do you include surround sound in your VR experience to create even more added dramatic effects. So Oculus were talking about their uh, squad mixing versus ambisonic mixing and how it all works, how it's put together. So this is really cool, really something I think, especially if you're looking to develop a VR app, you should definitely go and watch the link in the description below. Quite interesting uh, research going on with VR and how it can actually be used in the real world practical setting. And one of the things that was there was some researchers had put together some software where basically in the virtual world you have someone drinking some soft drink with some added sugar in it. And then over time they have this simulation, this VR simulation um, that shows you how much weight this person would actually gain within that specific, you know, it could be two years or five years if they continuously drink a specific amount of that soft drink for whatever time it is. So they could actually customize that simulation for real world people based on their real height, their real current weight and their, you know, whatever. So I thought that was pretty interesting. VR in education is also something that's pretty big. Stanford conducted some studies where they graduates from different faculties in going to other universities and created this software based on specific scenarios. For example, uh, what happens when there's an earthquake or a big, huge tornado uh, or a flooding of some kind, trying to see giving simulations to architects who are building real you know, buildings and putting those buildings in those scenarios so that they can then, you know, fine tune the materials or all these kind of things. MIT also conducted some research providing the VR headsets uh, to students to teach them about biology at the molecular level. So VR is definitely starting to creep into the classroom. There's so many things you can teach, including uh, the planets, you know, when you're traveling to different planets and all these kind of things. And of course, traveling with the app Wander, you could travel to different places, learn different cities. So definitely a lot of educational value uh, for VR that's going to be coming up very soon, I think, within the next five to ten years. All about AR used, you know, with Facebook uh, and the software that you use, which is called Spark AR. So how you integrate, for example, people trying out uh, glasses or makeup or different clothes or even furniture you can put inside of your home. You can imagine, you can see what it would look like in your living room before purchasing it. So they're talking about the challenges they have, the new technologies that are coming up. So link in the description below to that keynote. Hand tracking technology is something that's really big for Connect 6. Everyone's very excited about it. However, we don't really know whether it's going to work or not. So I managed to find some footage of two people, uh, one reporter from CNET, who seems to have said it works okay. He was trying different apps. He didn't really have big issues with it. However, there was another guy who also managed to track it, link in the description below to his video, who said that the moment his hands were away from the actual headset at the top, at the bottom, there was actually a lot of issues with it. Uh, it didn't really work perfectly. It worked well when it was more towards the headset. And finally, closing this part two off, we couldn't go away without talking about Oculus Link. What was mentioned is the fact that Facebook will be providing a cable, a supercharged cable, which then provides you more or less 95% of the capabilities of the actual Rift S. And this cable will be five meters long. Uh, there's a keynote about the challenges they had 
in terms of the latency, how they managed to make the technology available. Really interesting to hear those guys talking about it. Link in the description below to that video. So we looked at some of the key highlights of part two, part two, that's right. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, subscribe and comment below ding, all your comments and suggestions as is how I can make the videos better in the future. And what were your highlights during Connect6? What, what apps did you think were cool? What news did you, you're excited about? And what kind of stuff you're like, nah, who cares about that? Leave a comment below, that'd be really awesome. All right, I will try my best to put a part three, part trois, tomorrow um, but you know time can be limited and it can be quite hard for me to put these videos but I will try my best I promise so thank you again for watching really appreciate it until next time take it easy DJ Q music maybe I'm a bird following the season